so much for looking beautiful. I know the weather outside is very dodgy, uh, but everyone came out. You all look amazing. So welcome. First things first, I want to welcome our live stream as well, live on Sowetan Live, uh, on the YouTube page as well as the Facebook page. Welcome. You're part of everything. And I also know that it's an exclusive event that only special people are here today. So welcome, and I hope we inspire each other, and I hope that by the time we all leave in a couple of hours, you are happy, and we've made each other. We have you know, hanged out, and we've, most important thing, networking and making contacts as well. So ladies, let's give yourselves a round of applause. Welcome to the Sowetan Women's Club, and uh, it happens every single year, and you know, we want to make sure that uh, you know, we all make friends, and we all network, and we all meet the right people. Most important thing, first things first, is to send a huge shout out to our sponsors, um, Sowetan Women's Club, Tomo is making sure that throats are open, so if you're not laughing by the end of this, um, yeah, there's going to be a problem. So make sure you drink as much turmoil as you can find. Dermalogica, shout out. I see at the back there, we're looking beautiful for our skin. Uh, Empire Entertainment, the reason we're all here as well. Uh, Gallo and Arena events. So big shout out to our sponsors. Please give them a round of applause for making this a possible. And speaking of throats and turmoil, ne, there's a thousand rand hamper. Yeah, boy. I know. By the time we're done here, we'll be laughing. You need to take a picture uh, right at our activation right here. Use the hashtag do not disturb. Uh, that is the theme tonight. And of course, you tag at Toy Moy SA and at Sowetan Live as well. Okay, so our editor of Sowetan, uh, she was saying she's a bit shy about this. And I'm like, Ganjan, you're an entire editor. You are the lady we're talking about tonight, uh, today rather. Uh, it's do not disturb. It's a lady that can walk into a room and can just kill it. A girl that says, or a woman that says, you know what, I don't care about the boundaries. I don't care about who the boss is right now. I will be the boss. So, Nobisa Makunga, please help me welcome our editor on the stage who's looking absolutely beautiful. And she was nervous, so, so right. I was. Right? I am. All right. I'm good. I'm good. I'm very excited. Um, Can I sit? Yes, please do. And you'll be having a very amazing chat with another lady that I absolutely love with my heart. I see one good Twitter. I mean, she will call you out in the Twitter streets. She will put you in your place in the Twitter streets. But one thing about her is that she's been in the industry for so, so long. Uh, I feel like sometimes we don't give people the roses they deserve when they are around and alive. And she is, I've worked with her on a set, actually. She is so talented. She is amazing at her work. She still puts in the work every single day. So, ladies, please help me welcome the beautiful and talented Ausrami. <laughs> Look at you. Are you talking about me? I'm talking about you. <laughs> Excuse me. And you two, they're going to have an amazing conversation right now. And um, the reason I say this is so powerful is because we have, I hate using the female term in front of anything, but I mean, she's killing it right now. She's our editor. She's amazing. So ladies, I'm going to give it to you. Thank you so much. Um, ladies and, yeah, the gents in the room. Um, <laughs> I like, ladies and... In the gents, in the, like by the way. Yeah, by the way, you know, you're more than welcome. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, it's an absolute pleasure. Um, and I just want to, before we get on to our conversation uh, with Rami, I just want to, one, say thank you for joining us, and two, um, there's a video that we want to play. It'll take just one minute, and then I'll really explain, you know, what it's about and why we are all here. Um, and if the tech guys are ready, please let's start playing the video. My child is bringing in spirit
No, you need, you need a tape glue. It needs to bend towards your mouth so that it's facing that way. Okay, guys, it's, it's a lot of experience in doing it and being on stage all the time. So I need a tape yeah, glue you need a tape. Now. Yeah. Until I get my face taped up. No, you're not on. I can I'm tell it. You know, we can't. I can't hear her. And she's sitting right next to me. You need, I think you need a new battery. Oh yeah, a new mic pack. Say something. Something? No? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing? Is there another mic, like maybe a handheld? A handheld. handheld. I kind of seem, I can hear yes, myself yes. now, is that you're okay? Yes, yes, you're good, you're okay. good. Yeah, we just need a tape so you don't hold your face. You know, okay, cool. people like doing like, oh, ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Right now, you look like that. So, um, so, so you guys saw the video while I still wait for my face to be, to be taped up. So you guys saw the video. And it's our Sowetan uh, Know Your Place video. And it's really the theme of today. So today, we've come to celebrate ourselves, celebrate who we are. I woke up, I think, about a month or so um, ago after uh, 10 or so Zoom uh, meetings and uh, you know event, events of the Women's Club. And I woke up and I called the events team and I was like, guys, we actually need a moment, just one day, a moment where we can come together um, physically. Obviously, <laughs> yeah. thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Rachel. So I was like, we actually need to come together and, and just breathe. It's been a horrible year. It's been a hard year on so many, uh, so many levels. Um, there's been so much uh, distraction, disruption. There's been death. There's been sickness. And I felt that, you know, as a team, we actually needed to gather and say thank you, not only, um, you know, to the people that we work with, but just really as, you know, as people, as women, as members of this club. I've met a lot of you today uh, for the first time after seeing you, I don't know how many times on the screen, um, you know, with all our, our virtual events. And so today is really about um, saying through everything that we've been through this year, we just want to take a couple of hours um, and say thank you and say we actually know our place, and the reason why we're fantastic and, and, you know, as women in what we do is precisely because we are compelled to by the dreams mm. that we hold, by the dreams, not only our mm. own dreams, but the dreams for our children and, and their children and what they want to do. And I really think today it's, it's really about us celebrating, um, celebrating that. And this is precisely why uh, we've got uh, Rami here, because she is somebody who, in our view, as a Sowetan Women's Club, really embodies mm. a woman who knows herself a woman who Thank knows you. her place, a woman who is not afraid to speak truth to, truth to power, a woman who is empowering. Um, and, and so this is exactly why you, know, why, why you are here, and we're really hoping to have uh, a fantastic conversation with you about that. Okay. And then after that, uh, after uh, her and myself speak, we'll open it up. I'm sure you guys have a gazillion questions that you would like to ask Rami. Um, and she'll answer what she can. <laughs> um, and, and yeah, so let's have fun. So let's start here. You, all the way from Polokwane, mm -hmm. you come to Joburg and you literally make a trick. <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the film industry, in the entertainment industry. Yeah. Just summarize your journey for us, uh, for people who uh, may not truly understand you know, it in its uh, entirety. Who is Rami? Where do you come from? What really inspires you? Okay. Dumelang. Hello. Likai. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, the, weather's, well, the weather is trying to be acting. Some type of way. Yeah, but <laughs> no, we will not surrender. We will not retreat. Um, but yeah, I'm so happy to be here. Kinna Rami, my name is Rami Chweni. And yes, I was born in Sishiro, zone two, number 2048. <laughs> Every time I say that, I, my mother reminds me, you know, there's someone who still lives, who lives in that house right now. Really? You keep giving them the address. <laughs> One day they'll go there and you won't be there. <laughs> yeah. But yes, I'm from Sishiro, from Polokwane. And yeah, um, 
I grew up in Sichero, and um, I went to school there. Then my family moved to Lubwaho, that's where they are now. Then I went to boarding school. Hello, anyone who went to boarding school? <laughs> People who went to boarding school, that means baked beans. Oh, God. <laughs> Not with my Dry beans. peanut butter. Oh, well, that, it depends. But when I said boarding school, I didn't say, I didn't say private school. <laughs> <laughs> I said boarding. Yes, but yeah. That it was it was that experience. Can you call local Jane Face? I hope do, you, do people know where Jane Face is, ne? Yeah. yeah, it's also in Limpopo. Then yeah, fast forward one day. Um, okay, I always known I've known since I was nine years old that I will I will be in the entertainment industry. Uh, you know the typical story. Where did you start acting or singing? Well, it was in church. Yes, it was in church. Uh, you'll be surprised. <laughs> and 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 uh, it is funny when people say yo. The drama that goes on in church. I'm like, we started it a long time ago, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, but I started, I started being in the choir, singing. My family used to sing. We used to sing together. And all of us, I've got five siblings. I'm a second born. So it's three girls, three boys. And both my parents are still alive. Um, I talked to my mother every day. I spoke to my mother. She literally drove me here on the phone. Hey, ba busy wana kaka di sili. Ba busy ba penta. Yeah. And, um, and then I came to Joburg uh, 10 years later. And when I say 10 years later, my first trip to Joburg was in 1986. That was the first time I saw Joburg. And we left Jane Fest in the afternoon. So when we arrived to jo uh, in Joburg, there were so many lights, guys. I was dizzy. I couldn't believe it. All of all, not just me, all of us, because it was a group of us, Koskolo, and we, went, we were wearing our school uniform. And I remember we were looking out, out of the, win, the bus windows, and we couldn't believe how many lights one city can actually have. It looked like a whole new world altogether. And, and I remember I was saying to my friends, I want to come and live here. I want to come and live here. And, and then, um, then they took us to the Southern Sun for dinner. And I saw all these grapes, and they said we can eat anything. <laughs> there was a buffet. It was the first time seeing a buffet. And I was so excited. I couldn't believe it. And I remember asking, can we eat all of this? They said, yes, all of it. Now imagine a group of 30 kids from Jane Fest who have never been in Joburg. Now they've left them a big table by the Southern Sun to eat everything. The first thing I wanted was a taste of those big, fat Black, black grapes, they, they, oh, they just put them there. I took a bowl, I put those grapes there. Someone was very thoughtful, they had already taken out the, yes. the thing, so they were nice and loose. I sat in a corner and I threw one in my mouth and guess what? It was bitter as hell <laughs> because it was an olive. <laughs> I did not know what those things were. <laughs> Yeah, it was an olive. I did not know what that was. And I now needed to go back to the table and go like, uh, not it. This, this is not what I ordered. Uh, but then in 1988, I came back to, to Joburg with my drama group from school as well. We went to the market theater. And I remember Mam Nandinyambe was the one who was doing the tour. And I was just so mesmerized. And I remember she asked the question, she's like, okay, which one of you wants to, to do drama? And now the whole, everyone is just shy. And then I'm like, me, Gilly one. It's like, what is your name? Rami. Rami Chun, okay. Clap hands for her. Clap hands for her. You will remember her. And they all went like, mm. I was like, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and fast forward 10 years later, I was my first show. I was performing at the market. Oh, wow. And it was, it was incredible. So from a tour of the market mm. theater to being on the stage of the market theater. So yeah, and that's how I started. I love the fact that she said, you will remember her. Yeah. Because essentially that is really what um, has, has become. And, and, and I want to ask you a question, uh, perhaps you know, you'll think about it, which is that what, what do you think it is about your journey that ought to inspire women, but also what myths have you busted basically along the way? Yo, a, a lot of myths. I think, um, and I, I think it's certainly sure when someone says it's a lot of faith. Um, I have crazy, crazy faith. And, 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 and I think 
the misconception is when we talk about faith, people think church faith. I don't, I'm not talking about church faith. Please get me right. Faith is when, you see, you, you, we prepared this event, right? Last month. Yeah. Already last month you said on the 28th of November we're going to have an event. That is faith because it is not there. It's only in your head. But now you see it already happening. We will have it as such and such a building on such and such a date, and the club is coming. Already you start seeing it in your mind. That's, that's, how I see, that's how I see the world. And every time I manage to see the world like that, it has kind of somehow obeyed and, and, and obliged me to do that. So every time I say, I'm going to do this, I need to do that, it, 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 just, it just happens. And, and, and that's how a lot of myths have been busted, because... Um, they always say, no, but you can't do that. Oh, no, you're too skinny, you're too dark, you're too this, you're too that. I'm like, okay, no, I, I think I'm going to do it. Sometimes I don't know how and when, but just the knowing, the, the, the level of faith needs to be so strong that it is so unshakable that nobody can tell you anything, you know? And that's what it is. And I think some of the most um, successful people... Um, the, the, the success, they're successful because of the level of their faith. And I think we can never under, underestimate that because we all have that. Everyone has that, uh, that, that, that faith. When you say to someone, see you tomorrow, when you call someone already, when I call your phone, I'm not expecting anything or anyone else yeah. to respond but you. And that is faith. You know? I actually believe what you're saying because and my friends and, and, and uh, my family always laugh at me. I always push for these things to happen, uh, and everybody will ask me, okay, so how are you going to do it? I'm like, well, God knows my heart. Yeah. And, and I don't know, yes, I will put in the work, um, the rest of what needs to come to actually make this, this thing happen, whatever project one is busy with. I'm like, God knows my heart. So I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm fully, I, I get what you, you're yeah. saying. Yeah. You work really hard. Yes. You, <laughs> you multi, I don't know how many projects you, you work uh, a lot. At, 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 you know, at the same time. But also on your birthday this year, you started your foundation. Yes, yes. And, and I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, it's really one of those things that are, are very much an expression of your generosity. Yeah. Tell us about the foundation, the work that you've done in the foundation, and, and really what your gesture um, was in that, you know, on that day, on the, on the 3rd of July, I think yes, it was. Yes, yes. Tell us yeah. about, about that. Yes, on the 3rd of July this year, when I turned 29... <laughs> I'm 29 for the 17th, if not 18th time this year, and we'll keep it at that. Um, I, I decided to, to open um, to, or to, to register my foundation, Rami Chwene Foundation. And to be quite honest, the main reason to, to, to formalize it is that when you do charity work and you're trying to reach out for, for, for sponsorship, to cooperate, uh, cooperate uh, you know, to different organizations to help you, they want something formal. They want documents. Who are you? What are you all about? And all of that. Had it not been for the formal side of things, I wouldn't have. Because I, let me just say, I've, had, I've always had the foundation, so to speak. You know, giving, raising funds, sponsoring people, taking people to school, buying a lot of, you know, those kind of things, you know, give, taking time out. That I've always done. And um, so it came to a point where now, because I want to do even bigger things, I realize that it is also important. It's not just because the corporate force you to do it, but I think it is important to have a certain structure so that things are properly well documented. You know, there's a bit of, there's some accountability. And, and I think, um, you know, I, I love order. Order is good. And I think it's, it's good to have order. When, when, you're, when you have order, it's easy for you to order things to come to you, yeah. you know? Order respects order. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, 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 why, that's why we started um, the Rami Chwene Foundation. But on my birthday as well, one, what we do as the foundation is that um, we always need to put my biggest gripe with people, or let me not just say with me, when people donate or when people give, is trying to do it in the limelight. Mm -hmm. So we do not do that. The Rami Chwene Foundation is that we don't want, we need to, it's okay for me to help you and still have you retaining the dignity that you have, yeah. you know? Yeah. You're, still, you're still a human being because 
just because you are less dis you are, you're disadvantaged or you're, le you're, you're less privileged mm -hmm. doesn't take the human element of who you are. It doesn't take the self-respect of the person that you yeah. think you are. And that dignity must be, mustn't be stripped, especially for PR stunts. Mm -hmm. You know, so we don't do when we do when we give when we do a lot of things we do not allow media. We don't do pictures. I mean, for some of the sponsors, yes, we will we will take pictures so that the spons the the if you yes. give me money, I will send you pictures to say look at what your money did. But I wouldn't want you to take to now take those pictures and show them to other people. So we do not do that. I think that we can easily um, uplift the black community and still be proud of who we are and still be able to, to have people walk with their head held high, you know? Do you think that as people we've become more or less generous? And, and I ask this because I think about the hashtag that you had, which was do yeah. good wherever you, wherever you yeah. are. And, um, and it really went, and, and, and a lot of people were touched by that, you know, and it really yeah. kind of went wide, uh, far and wide. But do you think generally as a society, and this is just an opinion, do you think we've become, uh, with everything that we face and every pressure that we, we are in, uh, less or more generous, basically? No, I think, I think maybe we've become less generous in bigger things. But what I like about um, our black communities where we grew up, we've always, we grew up in generosity. Yeah. You know, if you can able, if you're, you, you, you are able to, Go next door, we look up at And then they mm -hmm. easily give it to you. Mama, mm -hmm. can I have two eggs? Yeah. Yeah. Then there's a cabbage thing. So we've always grown with the, uh, generosity is our culture. It is so in us. And what I like is that like even the people who have absolutely nothing, they'll still take that nothing and cut it up and share it among themselves. Mm -hmm. You know? So I think in a way, um, we lose the sense of generosity because people think that to be generous, it has to be big things, which is why it says, do good where you are. Mm. You know, being able to say, uh, I'm buying meat for my house, let me buy an extra bribe pack, I'm going to send it across the street. Mm. That, is, that is good, you're doing good where you are. Mm. So we don't need to have a hall, then get a, a fleet of cars to come and park, and then after this, that we say, we spent, four, we spent five million to put the event together, than to donate one million yeah. to a community. Yeah. But we just ate five million because the buffet was so much. <laughs> yes. yeah. Okay, obviously yeah. you can see that we've got issues with the buffet. <laughs> <laughs> since, since, since that, that day, we shall not talk about <laughs> Back in 1986, <laughs> you know? So what we are driving as the organization is that it, you don't have to be a name, you don't have to be a brand. You don't have to be big. You don't have to have money. Packet a bisto, guys. Guys, have you fried an onion proper? Ne? After frying onion, ne? You put a beef stock. <laughs> guys, ne? Ir. It does the things. Then old papa on the side. Ah, we are done. We are done. Yeah. yeah, and then if there's excess and you throw in tomato nyana, a couple of slices of cabbage, you understand that? All those things. So basically, the, and, I'm, and I'm giving you those exam, examples because it is the basics of the basics. And that is what we are trying to push, mm -hmm. the basics of the basics. Right now I'm doing, oh, okay, you mustn't put this on TV. A, a drive, okay, you, you know there's a big thing that happened, the yes. storm, so we are mobilizing that. But I won't say exactly what we're doing. But we're mobilizing that. And everyone keeps asking, but then, hey, budget, care. no. It's as a budget. People lost windows, the roofs have fallen in. Rekalizenge. Mm -hmm. Buy one, buy a glass, buy a window. Give Everything. me glass, give me windows. Give, uh, give me, give me, lizenge. give me whoopi, give me rice, give me b baked beans, give me whatever. We will load it on the trucks and we will go to Sesheru mm -hmm. next week. That's it. So I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be bothering Patrice Motsepe, eh, me bra. <laughs> and like, you were born since we were chairperson, eh, yasa, ya, kind of was that, yes, yasafa, ya kev. Since we na chairperson, I was just thinking, you know, a million, no. No. 
one rand, one rand, one rand, one rand, one rand from each and every person, household, whatever. I've got, how many followers do I have on Twitter? I don't know. Let's just say 600. A million on Instagram. Can you imagine if every follower gave me one rand on Instagram? I've got a million followers. That's one million rand. And that's what I'm saying. Veranda. One rand. Veranda. That's all. Makes sense to me. Totally. Exactly. Let, let's talk about what I call, and it's a personal description, what I call your activism. Yeah. In the, in the film industry. We all know it's, it's, it's a difficult industry. I mean, you've told us this. <laughs> you've told us this many yeah. times. Um, you've told the stories. You've really spoken you know, truth to power to say, we can no longer live in this situation where artists are exploited, etc. But I want to understand, if, 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 if you may, really kind of what drives that for you. A lot of, a lot of uh, not all, uh, many artists become quiet and suffer in silence. You've been one of the people who've kind of shone the torch to say, this is who we are, this is what we deserve, and we're going to fight for what we deserve. Yeah. What is the thing that drives that, drives that in you? Uh, what, what, dri what drives the, the, the passion in the entertainment industry? I feel like um, it's, it's the fact that, I don't want to say the powers that be. Someone was saying this word, the, 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 the phrase, the powers that be, is being overused and overdone. But... Basically, when we say the powers that be are the people who will give us the money or the budget, okay? Um, so that would be our bosses. They have the, because they are the ones with the budget, they ultimately think it gives them the power to run the show, but it actually doesn't. You can be a big corporation, you know? You can be a big retailer. The day your customers, the ones who come with their five friends, the day they decide that they're not going to come to your store, there is absolutely nothing you can do. You can renovate the building. You can bring Beyonce to stand there. If they decide to not come, they will not come. So also with the entertainment industry, the actors, the artists, uh, and when I say actors and artists and crew, I'm talking about everyone, your cameras, makeup, everybody, crew. Those are the people on the ground. Mm. And the people on the ground, their livelihood is depending on the powers yeah. that be, our bosses. So there is a very big divide where we are sitting as artists and where the powers that be are sitting. And even the Department of Arts and Culture. I know Minister Nati Bitecha thinks I don't like him. No, I do like you, my minister, but <laughs> no, <laughs> but no, <laughs> yes. I just want to go like, hey, hey, not like that, like this, but you know, um, and, and, and I will always fight with him. I'm, I'm not fighting him personally. I'm fighting the structures that are put in place because they gag the artists. And now... <laughs> Artists are very sensitive, guys. We are God's favorite children. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's Thank artists, you very much. then journalists, and then everybody else. It's, it's just us. <laughs> then. <laughs> it's just us and the others. <laughs> uh, but, uh, and let me, t let me tell you why I say that, because it, it sounds like such a... Really, you know? The thing is that uh, people in the... Creative arts demand... You have to put in your personal person and the personality into what you're doing. Do you understand? If you go to a, 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 a shop and someone is sitting, go, go tilling, ne? a cashier is ringing your thing, she doesn't have to sing your groceries. You might not even know that they are, how talented they are and all of that. So what makes the artist different is that everything that we are comes as a package. You can't separate mm. who you are from what you do. Mm. So that is why it gets so personal. Mm. So when you are aggrieved and when you are unhappy, it affects the result of what you're supposed to deliver. Mm. And I think then that's when we are robbing ourselves. Yes, we all, people get depressed. People, and, you know, people, this, we have such a high rate of suicides. We've got a high rate of substance abuse, drug abuse. And, you know, people are alcoholics. 
And you know what it is? It is because the creative spirit in them is fighting the logical spirit mm -hmm. of them because mm -hmm. the spirit says, this is what I want to do. And the logic says, ha, for Turanda, mm -hmm. you will never. Mm -hmm. But now when you're, when you're used to doing something and you're so expressive, mm -hmm. it starts stifling you and that's what kills you. And that's why you find that a lot of artists, they cannot take being gagged. That is why oh, someone would rather that. pick up their guitar, a performer robot dome, because there's something, yeah. I, I, for lack of a better word, there's a ukarunet mm -hmm. that just wants to do something. Mm -hmm. But if you don't do that, you get very frustrated. Sometimes we're not frustrated because there's no money. We are frustrated because there's no platform mm -hmm. more than anything. Do you ever get tired? Tired of pushing for what is right? No, Karata didn't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Karata didn't do it. There's a fight. I'm like, where are we fighting? <laughs> what? Uh, it's like, hey, hey. Oh, so what are we, why are we beating him? Oh, 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 okay. I didn't know that. No, I'm always ready. Always I'll ready. Tell you why yeah. I asked that question. Yeah. I found your, your approach in these things quite fascinating. Your approach is very educational yes. rather than only emotional. Yes. And I, and, I, and I sometimes wonder, do you ever feel like, oh, my God, I'm teaching them the same thing over and over and over again? Yeah. Do you, you, know, do you ever get tired of, of, of no. that? And you said no. But, uh, yeah, I don't get tired, and I'll tell you why. Uh, my mother used to be a teacher. My mother was a teacher for 36 years. And, um, and I think I get the teachings. In fact, that's one of the things I would have done. Mm -hmm. First, had I not been in the entertainment industry, I would have been a Formula One driver. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I would have loved to be a teacher. I know. I know, I know, I know they, don't go, they don't go together. <laughs> but I would, have, I would have loved to be a teacher. So I, teaching is my passion. So every time I teach, especially on social media and I put stuff out there, I do it as if, okay, that was the grade three from 1992. Now, today I'm teaching the grade three from 1993. The syllabus doesn't change. It's just the people who come through for the lesson mm -hmm. that change. Mm -hmm. So you cannot change the syllabus just because the people have moved. You stick to the syllabus so that the people can learn and move on and go learn other things. So I never get tired of teaching. I will do it over and over and over again. And the backlash? Is oh, what backlash? <laughs> nah, imagine. Nah, nah. I'm so backlashed. Let me hide behind the chair. No. Yeah. Tomorrow is a fresh day. Go get a new energy. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you two, uh, two last questions from me and then I'm going to open up uh, for the ladies to basically interact with yeah. you. Um, and the, the one is about um, what I, it's about motherhood. Yes. You are just That's that mother. That's the bestest thing I know, to I know. I know, you are it. just like that mother. Um, and you've got such a special bond. Okay, look, everybody has a special bond with their kids, and I get that. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, you've got such a special bond with your kids. What do you think motherhood has done to you, to Rami? What do you think it has taught uh, uh, Rami and and Literally, you're a pouring of love for your kids. Yeah, your motherhood. Guys, I've got three kids. I've got three biological children. Uh, Gifil is 26. Um, Ntateng is 24. Votsilo is 13. Going on 50 because... I love it. Really, yeah. She is like that. Um, then I've got other kids, the other ones that... Though, then I've got a son-in-law. My daughter got married this year. And... Um, yeah, Africa is, how old is Africa? 32, yes. Um, and then I've got other kids, so many of them. Um, but I think ma what motherhood has taught me is, is unconditional love. And, and unconditional love, there's two levels to unconditional love. Un unconditional love is when you say, ah, I love, I love them unconditionally irrespective of what they do. But there's also intentional, unconditional love. Where you say, I love them the way they are, but I choose not to leave them the way they are. You need to instill values, educate, teach, guide, um, you know, encourage, motivate. That, and, and I think when you get that from your parents, especially mothers, I think it is, it is the biggest gift you can ever give to your children. And also, in teaching them intentionally, unconditionally so, is to be able to say, 
hey, listen, you're going to fall, not once. You're going to fall so bad, you'll come back. Do you understand me? They need to understand that the world is not just a playground. We all get hurt. We all get uh, heartbroken. We all get disappointed. And in all of that, you have to still throw love over all of that. Throw love over the disappointment. Throw love even when you are the one who's disappointed. Your kids are still going to disappoint. That's why I never call Robert Pelomar. Yes, yes. <laughs> kids can break your heart. They can break your heart. And the following day, you still have to look at them and you're like, <laughs> still love you it. just, mm, on your, mm. but then you realize, oh, no, man, by the way, now what I like to do, when, when my kids frustrate me, I just go back and remember, okay, when I was that age, what did I do? Like, okay, so you're not doing badly, you're, not, you're okay. Because I'm like thinking, hey, nah, uh, yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> you know, and Rina, we're not guided like that because I'm from, a, I'm from a, a, a Christian background. Guys, I was born in church. So when you don't see me go to church, please understand, I'm all churched out. The way I've gone to church, I can die and come back, and I will still have gone to church enough times to cover me the next three lifetimes. So, keshab, understand that. Trust me, keshab. There is nothing that, there is absolutely nothing you will tell me about church that is new. I know all of it. But, but it's been good, but that's, that's the upbringing. But now you find that you, when you change, now love, love doesn't work with law. And when I say law, yeah. So when you put law, law that does not work in favor for both parties, that's where you cut yourself from your children. This, what you apply that side has to also apply this side. For if it was you in the position that they are in, what would you have liked the other person to do with you or for you? Consistency. Exactly. You need to be consistent. So I think that's what breaks that. You cannot go... Yeah, I always say that, okay, when I don't want to do something, that, that I kind of abuse. But when it comes to serious issues, we need to open conversations so much that your kids, when they are in trouble... The first person they want to call is you. Nahana phone like me mang mang. Le kai ke eh ke ausra mi ke na me wa si po. Eh no no si no no si po wako no no wako zone eight wako zone eight. Yes. Hey. Ke na le wa na shu. Ke shali pusha koru okai. No, she's been here for three days, man. Hey, a problem happened. Now, at that point, she took your car, she wrecked your car, they left it somewhere, and then you reported your car stolen. And then when are you th then the child is missing. We are all, all over the place looking for the kids. Can't we pick the mama going, please call my mother? Because if I do it, she's going to kill me. No. My kids call me first. Mm. And I would like parents to do that. Make your children be the make be that person your kids call you first, irrespective of what they have done. Whether they're enjoying themselves, whether they're having fun. Now my kids, hey guys, you know, they drank they drank call me, but I love it. <laughs> Mama go rata, I love you so much, Mama. I love it. I love you so much. And I go like Lemo guy. No. We moved. But what I like is that they're so responsible. They give they share the location. They tell you we are moving from Bramfontein. Now we are going to altitude, from altitude to rockets, from rockets to guys. I've been to all those places. The days are like, it's fine. Wait, park the car. I'll Uber there. I Uber there and I go fetch them. I fetch them, got two. I fetch them, got three. And then they still, but they still have, and it's not living recklessly. Yeah. They're not reckless. It's just that now when you say it, it sounds like they're just all over the place. They're very responsible young people. And they know when it's time to work, when it's time to focus, when it's time to play. Mm -hmm. But I need, to, to be, I need them to be able to explore their lives to the fullest of their potential and see what are their possibilities. Mm -hmm. And I wish that for all, especially black children. I wish that. When I said to uh, that tweet, my children drank on me, a lot of people, they're like, yo, my mother will kill me. And I'm realizing, hey, Alina, my mother would have killed me, which is why I only started drinking when I was 25. But why? 
We don't need mm. that. Mm. We want healthy relationships with our children. Mm. Transparent. We need them to, we need the yeah. transparency. Yeah. Now we used to have, we used to have guys, teenage pregnancy, guys, you know, hey, I'm a teenage mom. Yeah, Father God. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have time to tell. I don't think there's time to tell you about that drama. <laughs> hey, what's up, Kaima Waswaba? Kaima Waswaba. Hey, yeah. Anyway, let's go to the. I'm sure they'll ask me later. I, I, let's go to the. So, so, so my last question, and I was actually going to ask it uh, differently, but I think because of the, the answers to your motherhood. I'll, I'll ask it this way, and, it's, and, I, and I think it would be a mess of us to not talk about uh, gender-based violence uh, because we are in South Africa and we experience yeah. what we, we experience. So I'll ask it this way. What is it that you teach your sons about how to treat women? I've got such beautiful sons, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure you, they They're look amazing. like you listen. <laughs> They're amazing. They behave yeah. like me. Okay, I mean... Uh, that vapapa, that's all spoken and all of that. And, and I like what, you know, um, we are able to sit down and, you know, on, on Sundays, um, especially Sundays, we have Sunday lunches at, at, at home and they all come. They come with their girlfriends, with their fiancés, with their living partners. Today you are thinking, what about the joy? See, hey, next thing you're like, you're like, how, babes, what happened to you? <laughs> and <laughs> one of my kids, um, Loy, his favorite answer, he likes to be like, yo, Kubi. Yo, yeah. Kubi. Yeah. Hakar Kubi, just know that it's over. <laughs> it's over. He's, he's not going to get into explanations, but you just need to go with the flow. And yes, I, uh, we, we talk about gender-based violence a lot. And, and, and um, some of them, in fact, most of them, they've experienced it themselves as, as boys. You know, and as boys saying, my dad used to hit my mom and, and we wouldn't know how to deal with it. And it got to a point where now you start getting taller, you get, you gain a muscle, you've got a few packs and then you're thinking, well, this guy, if he hits my mother one more time, I'm going to stab him, you know? And, um, and you find that you, you, uh, gender-based violence has an effect on both men and women or girls and boys in, in, in neg negatively. It might be in different ways, but at the end of the day, there is nothing positive yeah. about gender-based violence. Yeah. You find that now you're raising sons who are always ready to retaliate, mm -hmm. who are always ready to fight you, mm -hmm. who are always to say, okay, fine, I know this guy's going to beat me up. And they start planning and plotting your death mm -hmm. as a father, going like, okay, give him another five years. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And when you die, they go like, let's throw a party, mm -hmm. you know? And, and, and I tell them, you need to remember, it's not just about protecting women, but it's also about you as a man, knowing that. And w when we talk about violence, we don't talk about physical violence. We talk about emotional abuse, because some guys, yeah. the emotional violence that comes with relationships yeah. and, and, and the verbal yeah. violence, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, you know, when, when someone knows that all I need to do is to say this, mm -hmm. I'm going to set her off. Mm -hmm. When you're mm -hmm. trying to go to a party mm -hmm. and then you're looking good and you've got big boobs like mine, guys. I mean, they don't fit in a bra. What must I do? <laughs> you know? And then he knows her and I go, oh, so you're going out today mm -hmm. looking like that. Already you're just going like, <clears throat> yeah. okay, you see how small that is? You see how small that is? That can impact a lot of things. Because already you're thinking, do I change? Must I not change? Yeah. That's get, hey, yeah, yeah, that's get is too short. No, go change that. <laughs> things like that. And I'm saying, with the same mouth, I always tell my boys, with the same mouth that you use to speak ill to someone or to speak negatively to someone, is it the same mouth that you're going to use and say, baby, I love you now? Nah. Mm, yeah. So when do we wash the mouth? Mm. Like, mm. where's the break? Mm. Where is the break? There's only one. Yeah. You only have one. Mm. So you need to put accountability on it, responsibility on it, respect 
on it. And if you don't know what to say, that's as long as there's something in your mouth, you can't say anything. Yeah. Yeah. So have a sip of water, literally. Mm. So I teach my, my, my boys to say, I don't need it to get to the point where you have to, I don't even want you to be over-promising someone. I will never beat you. Mm. I'm, I will never. No, no. They have to look at you and know. Or you see this one. He will not do it. Mm. Mm. And it is in your behavior. Mm. It is in your speech. Mm. It is in how you carry yourself. And it is how you treat each other. And you t- even your brothers, your sisters, and the people around you. Yeah. It is in how you react to things. Mm. Are you a proactive person? Or are you a reactive person? There is, oh, it doesn't matter. Think fast. We all have fast reflexes. If this thing tries to fall, I'm going to quickly go and mm. catch it. Mm. But between my brain and my hand going there, or between my brain and my hand going like this, mm. there's a distance mm. that puts enough thought for you to go, would I, should, should I, I? Yeah. could I? Yeah. And that's yeah. where you make a choice. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So I'm going to open it up. Um, to, to questions. Uh, anybody who may have a question for Rami, I don't know if, are you, are you going to help us, uh, Anati, or how should we do it? So I see there's a, there's a hand on the front here. Hi, Rami. Ligai? Okay, thank you. Rami, actually, I'm so inspired by your journey. Thank you. You said you came to Joburg in 1986? Yes, for the first time. Okay. What standard were you? Because there were no grades by then. <laughs> what standard? I find I that school, question very school. offensive. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm calculating something. I was in standard six. And 1980, yes, I was in, no, I was in standard five. Because the private school, okay. the school started with standard five, yeah. Because you know why? It's like you are still in high school. Yeah. Actually, I like your energy. You're so bold, Rami. I'm just imagining your son-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> He's crazy. He's crazy like you. Yes. Okay, Rami. Secondly, I just want to applaud you on your, they said you got this new charity. Yes. Actually, I don't know anything about it. I only started to hear about it now. Mm. You know why? Because I'm also a BBT, but I like things. <laughs> That's why I'm here. I think I'm the oldest around here. <laughs> and I'm a club member. Yeah. But I think it's time now, so we has to offer me some... Uh, Let, really, let's talk. Yeah, let's because talk I've been reading Sowetan ever since its inception. I think it was in 83 or so. Wow. While I was in high school. You know why I'm here? Because every time I got a copy of Sowetan, but ever since lockdown, uh, I don't get it normally. So we have to... Well, internet, yeah, you yeah. and I. You and but I. all in all, Rami, you are such a bold woman. Thank you. I love you so much. Thank you so much. Thank I you. appreciate it. Do we have Can someone we... else? Yes. Oh, that's the got, you must yes. ask me anything, eh? Nah, me. I'll give you answers. Don't be shy. Anything about anything. Morning. Morning. Is it on? Yes. Okay. Okay. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Sowetan for the prestigious event. It's well planned. And secondly, Osrani Dumela. Dumela? Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, so much. Uh, what I'd like to say is, um, now of late, I've seen you on the media. Uh, people have been shaming your body because that is what we women mm. normally experience. Uh, you are you are perceived normal if, let's say, for instance, you are slim or you are medium. Mm. But if, like, I want to talk from experience, now I can be slim. This is not my body. I can slim. People will be like, ah, sister. sister. Yeah. But I can kana. They'll be like, ah, the mamas. I'm, like, I'm getting old. So I want to know, like, I was very much inspired because Kibone, 
there was an advertisement. I give up who are the, the, the shop. Yeah, underway, ne? Yeah. Mara limponi mara. Yeah. Hey. Ah, mugele. Kura kibo, ne? If I answer this, I can do this as well. Yeah. So give up now. Ubu ubu tahuri. How do you treat uh, body shamers? Because uh, this thing of body shamers, it looks like, to me, it's another part of gender based It is, because, definitely. It because is. Because it's your body. It is. It's a real one. So, kibatla tseba hore, kibatla ubushisha sese hore, wena, like, how do you respond? Yeah. To, to, to the media, to people, social media, how do, how do you respond? Yeah. Well, um, when it comes to, to body shaming and, you know, and, and the sad thing about body shaming is that you get it from both men and women. Yeah. Everybody does that because the first thing when someone walks in is, is and you It's Swiss. Yeah. Kiddie, we, kiddie, Hi, Swiss. This is Dibe Mohali. He's my manager. And I was saying to him, I was saying to him this morning, all oh, these pointers, we can talk. An hour each on all of them. Yes. I was like, how are we going to compress this? Yeah, no, we, we can sit and talk the whole day. So the hour Please. came, the hour went, <laughs> and uh, we are done right now. Thank you so much. Uh, you're absolutely amazing. I think you said all the relevant points that we wanted to discuss, especially in this women's club. I'm seeing a lot of new faces. Uh, welcome, ladies. And again, gentlemen, also, hello. How, how are you? And we're live as well on uh, at So Wait and Live, so make sure that you're enjoying the streaming. And if you need Wi-Fi, there is Wi-Fi, the most ha, important ha, ha, thing. Ha, ha. You can't tell us now the most been important here. so please take your pictures and also remember toy Moy is giving away a thousand rand hamper so you can enjoy all the alcohol that you need it's 5th december already so why not the throats are open so i uh, just search empire guest and the password is empire venue in small letters and post as many as you can so i uh, thank you so much Asrami. thank you so much right. us as well so now we're gonna have a panel discussion um, I'd like to call through some ladies on the stage to come join me. Yeah, I'm not doing uh, the panel. Oh, no, 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 no. Swiss, eh, sorry, sorry, oh, man. You guys, you know I wrote a book. Huh? <laughs> this was when English agreed. <laughs> ah, Erika Ipona. Basically, just tells you my journey. Okay. It's it's short stories. Um, it's called "We Kiss the Sun and Embrace the Moon." Um, I and I I explain why it's called that in the book, and uh, I've read it actually. You I was have. one of the first. Give it to me. Yes, yes. yes. But and how many copies do you have here? You've got. Okay, I've got copies. Kibo <laughs> Black Friday. Okay, the book is 200 rand. The book is 200 rand. Rona le price Black Friday. Like, boom, 100 rand. That's all. Next week. Next week. Ah, uh, the uh, 100 rand. 200. Let I reka anyway. Okay, so it's, 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 it's a collection of short stories, how I grew up, the industry, and all of that. And what I like about my book is that, because it's short stories, ne? They, they, they're all about me, but they're not necessarily married to each other. You can start with your favorite story, or what you think mm -hmm. might be your favorite story. So you can tell, start it from the back, read it in the middle, the beginning, it doesn't matter. I have the book there. Those of you who want to get Please buy, because please the point of this is to support it. each other, right? And to network. Yeah. Thank you so much. My time is thank you. Station. Thank I'm you so going. much. Your hour was amazing. Me, I'm leaving. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> please Kasi give it up for us. Thank, you, thank, you, so thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. And remember, the Wi-Fi is Empire Guest, and the password <laughs> is small letters, Empire Venue. Can I please call our CEO of Miss South oh, Africa on the stage? Is she here? Is she here? She's going to join us soon. Two seconds. She's getting mic'd. Okay, okay. Uh, we've got Keti Wamlangeni as well. Are you in the building? Is this Keti Wamlangeni in the building? Can you please come through to the stage to come join me? Uh, and also, I'd like to also call through Angelique Jacqueline as well. Look how beautiful. Is everyone getting mic'd? Alrighty, fantastic. So, we'll be talking about women who, are, who know their place. That is the hashtag we're all using, know your place, oh. at Sowetan Live everywhere. And we're going to talk about <laughs> businesses, we're going to talk about health and fitness, we're going to talk about how did you decide to be, you know, to start off Mrs. South Africa. So I'm very, very excited. Big shout out to all our sponsors again. Uh, I need to send a huge shout out to Sowetan Women's Club, obviously. I uh, Toy Moy. 1,000 Rand Hamper, take a picture right there in our activation and hashtag do not disturb and we'll find you and give you if you win. Uh, Dermalogica as well, our skin is looking beautiful at the back. Empire Entertainment for making this possible, Gallo and Arena Events as well. So we're just waiting for our ladies to come through 
and we will have this panel discussion. And also remember that uh, in a bit, we'll also open the floor in case you want to start your business or there's something you want to do that you've been thinking about and you don't know how to start. So there are all my ladies. All right. Yes, What's welcome. today? Remember, we're live as well, so yes. uh, we'll obviously be asking as many questions as we can using the hashtag on social media as well. So, are you good? Are you good? Are you good? The books. Can we hear her? Our mics. All right. Welcome. You can. We're just waiting for the ladies to get real mics. Can we hear you now? Hello. Not yet. All right. We can't hear you. Can we hear you? Hi. Hello. hello. You can you hear me? Yes. How go. are you? I'm good and you. It's I mean, so wonderful to be here. You look gorgeous with the weather trying us. I know, right? The weather tried it, I but know, it didn't happen. exactly. But we are here. How are you, John? I'm good. How are you? It's so great to be here, Nancy. Thank you for having me. I'm fantastic. We need to talk about you being the CEO of Mrs. South Africa. Right. How did that come about? So I actually won Mrs. South Africa in 2009. Yes. Yeah, so it's been a while. And then I got the opportunity shortly thereafter to then get involved with the company and then eventually actually bought over the company mm. and have been running it for the past 10 years. It's been an incredible journey. We've also got our current reigning Mrs. South Africa here. Hello. So let's maybe ask her to stand up and give her a round of applause. She's joined us. There she is. <laughs> she looks gorgeous. She's mm. absolutely gorgeous. Yes, I've been running it for the past 10 years um, or so, and it's, it's been an incredible journey. Let's talk the realness of, of starting something so huge and being part of it. What were some of the early challenges that you went through? I As think, a woman. Right, yes. Mm. I think at the time when I started it, um, turning 49 January, I was um, you know, fairly young for um, a woman to be in the position of, of CEO. So I definitely felt um, the pressure and almost the judgment, you know, firstly, um, you know, as a woman, um, having to, to deal with a lot Thank of, you. Um, you know, big corporates and, you know, big bosses and, and big egos also mm. sometimes. Mm. Um, and yeah, I think that was definitely a challenge for me. And also at the time, I felt that people would underestimate me because of my age as well. And, and I guess, um, you know, just also for being a woman in general and being blonde, you know, there's a stigma attached to that even. Um, so, so yes, there's definitely been some challenges, but um, yeah, it's, 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 been, it's been good. Who can enter Mrs. South Africa? Is, like, is there an age limit? You have to be married? Like, who, who, can, who enters? Right. So, you, um, so it is for married women between the ages of 25 and 50, actually. So some of us would just not apply. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, yeah. So, so it is for, for you know, mothers, um, business women, women really from all walks of life. It's, it's, um, the women that we work with um, is really an amazing demographic. And um, also more mature, you know, between the ages of 25 and 50, which is quite a, a wide age range if you think about it. But, um, you know, when, when you see all these ladies together, you'll have some of the ladies, one or two in their 20s, and then you'll have some women in their 40s, and they really are just all incredible in their own, in their own right. Sheesh, I love it. I yeah. love being part of something that, you know, is so groundbreaking as well. Right, yeah. How are you doing? I'm great, thank you. Your mic is on now. We can hear yes. you, right? Yes. All right, let's talk health and beauty, right? Um, tell me about you and, and, and what your passion is and why you decided to work in this industry. So I am a professional skin therapist. I studied quite a few years ago at UJ. Um, it was somatology back then. Um, and I've really just been passionate about skin. I actually first fell in love with the industry through makeup. And I remember thinking to myself, well, you know, to have really great makeup, you have to have a good canvas. And that kind of just changed my life. And I remember enrolling for health and skincare and learning so much. And um, through the years, I've had the chance to really change skins and change lives as well. Um, you know, reminding women that they can be confident in their own skin. Mm. What are some of the major challenges you've seen? gone through? Um, personally, you know, I've always been very lucky in that I've had quite a healthy skin. But recently, I have been struggling a lot with that mask acne. Mm. Um, it's become a really big thing, mask acne. And throughout lockdown, I went through such a low point in my own self-esteem because, 
you know, I have to be this symbol almost of a healthy skin. And, you know, getting my, routine, my own routine right and being able to share that with everyone else um, has been really, really great. I mean, I'm, I'm going to open the floor at some point, but I think one of the questions a lot of ladies, you know, talk about or ask is that what are some of the little mistakes that we make. I mean, uh, we hear drink your water all the time. We hear sometimes exercise. And also you get older, you know, your skin changes as well, or weather conditions, or areas. So what are some of the little mistakes that we make when it comes to our skin? Well, um, it is important, absolutely, that we kind of look after our bodies as well as our skin. Um, you know, I always say that, you know, if you eat an unhealthy di a diet, um, you know, your your heart's not going to be healthy. So will your skin be healthy? Absolutely not. Your skin is actually your largest organ in the body. So it is important that we get that um, healthy eating right. But also, you know, we need to be looking after our skin with great ingredients and great skincare. I think the biggest mistake we often make is soap. <laughs> and soap it's actually really stripping and drying for your skin. So I think your first step should be getting a really great cleanser that is soap-free and a great moisturizer to protect your skin as well, as well as sunscreen. Oh, this yes, I think we all forget <laughs> sunscreen, eh? Yes, absolutely. The sun actually causes 90% of premature aging. So if that is your concern, um, it's very important that you start wearing it every day. Back to the soap, um, this might seem like you know, an easy question for you because you're like, okay, when you say that we should use certain soaps, we have this misconception I've heard that the ones that have coloring, you shouldn't use only white soap. Is that true? Well, uh, what's very important is that you are using a skincare brand that is artificial fragrance and colorant free um, because it is quite irritating and harmful to the skin. So always go for your more plant-based ingredients. Um, professional grade skincare is always best to look at. All right, I want to involve in the conversation as well because you're also very much, you know, involved in the health and the fitness. Ketua, welcome. Thank you very good much. Good to have you. You look gorgeous. It's good to be here. Before we continue the conversation, give us a background of, you know, who you are and, and what your passions are and uh, what you work with. So my name is Ketua Milangeni. Hello. And <laughs> hello, everybody. Thank you very much for, for so attend for Women's Club for having me here. Um, I, I co-founded Pop-Up Gym, a fitness movement with Lita Khuzulu, um six years ago. And um, the reason for starting the fitness movement is that I went through a journey of my own to getting to that point where when my, my kids, my then six-year-old, when she's 15 now, when she was six, we were on holiday and I think I had a bit too much of a good festive season. <laughs> I know I'm, I'm not very, my, my friend is not big, but she asked if, she said, mommy, are you going to have a baby? And, you know, hearing those words, she was six, and I, you know, just was inquisitive and saying, why, Nana, why do you ask that? And she said, because your tummy's big. So that's the summary of how I started my fitness journey, how I went on my own fitness journey, met Little Ho, and the reason for starting Pop-Up Gym is that because we wanted to empower women that you can actually, I love, by the way, I love absolutely everything that Rami, um, as Rami said today, mm. it's so fitting. I actually wanted to say, why, are we even, why am I even here? Because she summed it all so beautifully. So my reason with, for starting Pop-Up Gym with Little Ho is to empower women to say, you need to love yourself, number one. Our bodies are not the same. You need to work with the body that God blessed you with mm -hmm. and work with it in a way that it becomes a healthy body. Back to what, uh, what Asrami said is that we're not the same. Mm -hmm. None of us have the same body size. And you can be a thin and healthy person and, a, and, and you can also be a, a big, healthy person. Mm -hmm. You just need to work with the body that you have. Our motto is pop-up gym, train anywhere, train anytime. And the, the one thing that we did throughout pop-up, we empowered people to continue exercising. Remember lockdown, we couldn't go anywhere. Yeah. We couldn't do anything. So all, what Letoko and I did every, every day alternating, we took a, 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 a you know, switched on our, our uh, social media channels, took an exercise mat, we exercised from anything like chairs, wine bottle, bean cans, toilet papers, brooms, but the whole idea and the drive behind the movement was that you actually have no excuses. Use whatever spaces that you have, dedicate 30 minutes of your day, because we, we train for an hour with people, but all we're saying is that make that important diary with yourself, the CEO of everything. Dedicate 30 minutes to yourself, lock out everything, give yourself that appointment, honor that appointment, and move, move in whatever way. I feel it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
it's I'm a not an attack. Well, it's not an attack. I've been and dragged. <laughs> no, it's not an attack. And going into festive season, I'll talk later. I'll give the other ladies mm. a chance. Going into festive season is something we, t- we need to adopt as well because that's the one time when we, we forget it all. Mm. You know, you forget all your work from January to December. You December and then January. New me, new me. New year, new me. Yeah. You, <laughs> you know, but you don't have to feel like that if you adopt a, an, a, an, an active lifestyle. All, I love saying all you need is 30 minutes in a day. That's mm. all you need. What are some of the simple things I can do if I'm not lazy, but mm-hmm. let's say, you know, I'm putting other things before looking after my body? What are some of the simple things I can do at home? You know how I, I look at it, I'm, and I'm going to answer your question. Mm-hmm. If you're able, we love lists, guys. We women, or, or everybody that just loves lists, prioritizing. We love, calendars are very important. Mm-hmm. But my question is that if you don't put yourself on that list and honor that appointment with yourself, how is it that you're able to honor other appointments? Mm. Because the most important appointment of the day is the one with the CEO, which is you. Mm. So I would say the first thing is to, cal- I call this a fit calendar. At the begin- on a Sunday when I'm planning the week, I take out my diary and I look at, what I, I look at the, the gut, that diary from a week's glance and I look for the, for the slots for where I can squeeze 30 minutes to mm. an hour. And within those, I work with, within those times and I, I, I make that appointment the way you'd make an appointment to mm. go do your beautiful nails, mm. to go do your beautiful hair, to go do your beautiful lashes, to go to the business meetings. And on, I make that appointment. And when I get that reminder an hour before, it nudges me and it prepares me mentally. So our, our phones are amazing. Mm. You put it in your phone, have it there. It's going to remind you. And when it reminds you, honor it. Start with Exercise is wide. We can spend the whole day about talking about everything. The, the most, the, I love the beginning is because that's when you explore what you like. Mm. You know, are you a cardio girl? Are you a weights girl? Are you a running girl? Are you, are you is dancing your thing? And that's the reason I wear a Fitbit, be, oh, a, a watch, and, and uh, a watch is because uh, an active watch, a sports watch is because you actually don't realize how you that you're actually moving, but you're not really without unintentionally, like mm. you're moving without, you know, without realizing that you're putting in the work. So I would say invest in, gift yourself, it's Christmas, gift yourself with something that's going to say, how, 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 how many steps have you taken? Like today, I've taken 6,000 steps already, but I'm, I, I wasn't walking saying yeah. one, two, three. It's going up and down. It's taking the baby to swimming in the morning. It's t- chasing the teens in the morning. So I've got a busy household, three kids, 15, 13, and two, but I'm also as important as all, all of them, of them. Mm-hmm. yes. Because and if I don't fill my cup, how will I be able to fill mm-hmm. their cups? Mm-hmm. And I think the most important thing, what I picked up with what you're saying, is holding yourself accountable yes. is so important. Yes. When you look in the mirror and you go to bed, yeah. what happened today? What did you do? Yeah. Let's talk about being a boss, a female boss. And, I mean, I feel like every woman here is, there's something you want to start or something you, you, you've been thinking about doing. Mm. What are some of the challenges you faced in terms of just being a boss and kind of leading a team of people and starting? Right. I think... If I can actually focus my answer on 2020 and the challenges that I went through as a boss this year, you know, um, having to be an employer was, I think, just as hard as being an employee, you know, having to make very tough decisions when it comes to restructuring and, you know, finance and, um, you know, God forbid, salary cuts and retrenchments and those hard decisions and things that we needed to really look at and consider because it was the reality that we that we went through and you know I think my message this year to my staff as well as to the ladies and the incredible women that I work with is something that I felt that I took from this year is is to lead with compassion and empathy more than ever Mm -hmm. and I think we as women sometimes feel that we need to toughen up and to try and compete with men. And I think that's the wrong approach. I think that we should, um, that our femininity is actually our strength. And that we should remember that leading with compassion and leading with empathy is so needed right now in the world. Mm. And, um, you know, to take, um, is it, listen, uh, her name is now out of my head once again, the, the Prime Minister or the President of, of um, is it um, New Zealand? Who am I thinking? Uh, Lucinda, well, come to me now. Anyway, so she she really um, also, um, you know, her whole philosophy is that she's been criticised as a leader for for being too soft almost, and you know she's really 
a great example for us as women to, to still lead with compassion and empathy, and that doesn't make us weak, and that doesn't make us soft. So I think that is definitely something that I learned this year uh, more than ever, and want to remind women um, you know, of uh, that they should um, you know, still, still use their femininity as a strength and not mm -hmm. diminish that and think that we need to now toughen up and you know, be more masculine to, to compete with men in the boardroom. Um, and that we should still remember that those are our strengths. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's been, you know, it's been a journey, it's been tough, there's been many challenges. Um, and I think overall, um, you know, I just love this whole campaign that you guys are running right now with Know Your Place, um, and that with Mrs. South Africa also we, um, the message that we, we really teach the women or empower the women with that we work with every year is that they are not just wives, they are not just mothers, mm -hmm. you know, they are so much more and that they can be so much more and that they really should just strive to be the best version of themselves, whether that is, you know, in the fitness space or, um, you know, just as, as a homemaker, if that is what you want, want to be and that is what fills your cup, as you say, then really, mm -hmm. um, you know, focus on that, but that you're not just that, you are mm -hmm. so much more. And that, um, and really just teaching women to, to be the best versions of themselves. So we're going to open the floor in just a bit if you've got any questions or comments or things you want to say. But I think one of the things about Know Your Place um, in every aspect is balance as a yeah. woman. Yeah. Right. I look at my friends that are married sometimes or my friends that are with kids. <sighs> hey, boy. On a Friday, you've had a long week. You are emotionally drained. Our mental health is important as well. You're a human being. And then you have to get home and, you know, there's your partner or your children or, you know, friends and your mother and your sister and your brother. They want a piece of you as well. How do you, the advice you have when it comes to balancing so many things? Who wants to go first? I honestly want to say is that don't like be the best version of, of you. Mm, and exactly. the, 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 what, I find, what I found over, over, this past, or the, over these past 10 months is the pressures that social media has put mm. on us as human beings is so big. It's so big. There's a time where you, it's okay to switch off. It's okay because half of us are, are winging it. You know, I've never been... I've never had a 15-year-old before. I've never had a 13-year-old before. I've never had sure. a two-year-old before. I've never been 40 before. Every single thing that I'm doing it, I'm doing it for the first time. Mm. So I take, you know, my advice is that take each day at a time. Mm. Do not compare, compare yourself to the next person because it will drive you crazy. You do not know what's happening behind the scenes. Yo. What we love on social media is putting mm. the pretty picture, you know, making, making, walking with my three kids like I've got it all, mm. you know, but you don't know in the, how I was shouting in the morning, Pumani! <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't know the behind the scenes. And all you just see is the pretty picture when I'm like... With the pram. With, you, know, you know, looking all, all, all glamorous, but you don't know what's happening in the background. Mm, exactly. So at, at the, when, you see, when you see somebody else looks like they're winning, remember that you don't know what's happening behind the background. Mm. One of my, one of my um, uncle-in-laws, when we were at the very beginning of our um, marriage journey, said that, Mdanam, one thing that you must never ever do is compare your home with another home. If everybody were to take off their roofs from their homes and you were to listen at what's happening at the Smiths, at the Laminis, at the Zulus, you'd actually say, yeah, 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 yeah. bring it back, mm -hmm. cover me, like I'm okay with what I have. So don't let social medias or the Jones or the Smiths get mm -hmm. to you because mm -hmm. you actually don't know the fire that woman is sitting on. She might look beautiful sitting on the stage, but you don't know. We're all dealing. We're mm. all going through so much. 2020 showed us Yo. flames. Flames is a lack of a better word, but, you know, for us to be here and to be sitting in this beautiful venue at this beautiful sermon, at this beautiful event, it just shows, I don't know what you believe in, it just shows that God... It good. just shows that, you know, we, are, we were faithful, we were, you know, we were with him. He was, we were leaning on him, and therefore we're able to be here. The one thing I'd say, take away from this, is that just stay true to yourself, stay true to you, don't forget the, the who. Don't forget whose child you are. Mm. But forward is where we're going. Don't forget who you are. Yeah. <laughs> now, ladies, um, another very honest topic is um, it's failure. It's being knocked down. Um, I like that you're saying 2020 showed us all that. Yay, we are not in charge of life. Mm. There's something bigger, someone bigger, yeah. whatever you believe in. Um, 
Let's talk about the times when, especially in your respective areas and careers, where you just felt like, ah, man, am I in the right path? Why am I being knocked down? I am going to interviews. I'm sending my CVs. I am going to meetings. I'm going to auditions. I, but it's not happening for me. And I'm seeing my peers, like you said, social media is a thing. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing on Facebook, gay hey, Usman Mang now posted that they got a new job. But Smang Mang, you got the job, another one just last week, or someone just bought a new car and you've been trying to get a new car, or you've been trying to move out of home, or, you know, life happens. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. When did this happen in your career or your life and you said, I'm done, but then you were not done? Mm. <laughs> well, I guess I'll, I'll talk. Um, so uh, within the beauty industry or the health and skincare industry, it is really tough tough for women, especially during these times. Um, we've had to be very dynamic, mm -hmm. move to online yeah. very quickly. Um, I am a training specialist at Dermalogica and I was so used to, you know, having my skincare therapist with me, being able to coach them, you know, stand next to them while they're doing their skin treatments. And, you know, it was just like a massive curveball. We had to move, you know, onto Zoom. Um, you know, it was just a complete different time. And mm. I think it has been a very challenging year, specifically for this industry. And I've had moments where I've just kind of thought to myself, maybe I should change my path. Maybe this isn't the best thing for me. But at the end of the day, I always remember that this is my passion mm. and I'm going to keep pushing and keep working to, to my goals, um, which, of course, I definitely want to eventually own my own skin center, definitely stocking Dermalogica. Um, yeah, so pushing myself and, and pushing those around me as well, influencing the therapists mm. has been very important. And adapting um, to a new way of living. Mm. It's been very Going different. with the times. Absolutely. We are a high-touch brand, and, you know, I've definitely realized that during this time, we need touch more than ever because that's how we truly connect with each other. And I've noticed, you know, so many people are going through so much of stress and you know the clients that we have been seeing are really just coming to us to connect with others you know you know with so so part of um what pop-up gym does the business side is that before lockdown we used to provide fitness services to corporates on their premises. So you can imagine it was managing a database of a couple of trainers and moving schedules around to say, uh, Tabo, you'll be here today, tomorrow you're here. So it was moving around trainers because that's what we live, pop up, our brand pop-up gym is really pop-up gym. Mm. As long as you have a, 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 a nice space, a garden, a, a rooftop, whatever, on your premises, we could bring you fitness. So when lockdown happened, that was a big knock. But like, like, like you just said, that we actually had to adapt from moving from being our trainers seeing um, our clients face to face in, a, you know, in their spaces, we quickly had to move for the times as mm -hmm. well and think and you know, just be to think, how do we keep business going? How do we keep business alive? How do we keep doing what we love within, you know, within the, under lockdown? And we also moved our sessions to Zoom. We also moved our sessions to Teams. And it was, it was very challenging because the unfortunate, things of lock, uh, the unfortunate thing of lockdown is that Businesses closed down. Yeah. We saw it. We see it, and we saw it happening around it. And we also lost business. But you know, with you know, we keep on. We keep on going because we love what we do. And and but that was a big knock. But we had to be. We had to adapt and move our business to online. People lost jobs People in 2020. Jobs. Mm. Yeah. It was bad. Yeah. Let's talk uh, failure as well. Right. On so how I you get up. Absolutely. I think, you know, in order to get up, you need to first fall down. Yeah. And I think that we should um, really remember the growth, to bring it back to 2020, um, tap ourselves on the shoulders for the growth that we went through this mm. year. As human being, beings, as women, I think there's um, been a lot of growth in all areas with regards to personal growth. Definitely, I speak for myself. Um, with regards to even growth within your company, whether maybe not necessarily financially, but there's, you know, just all the things that we've learned. And I think with failure comes lessons mm -hmm. and with failure comes things that you can learn from it. If with failure comes growth at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So I think we shouldn't be afraid to fail. I always tell my daughter, I also have a nine-year-old, not three, only one. <laughs> <laughs> Keep one. <Yeah. laughs> so, but, um, you know, I always tell her, 
with, with her growing up, a thing for her was, you know, she was she didn't want to fail in a test. She didn't want to mm -hmm. do badly. She didn't. She was afraid sometimes to try out because she was so scared mm -hmm. of, of failing. Mm -hmm. So my lesson to her as a mom is exactly that. You know, in order to to succeed, you need to to fail. Mm. So so don't be scared of failure. And that's what fearlessness, I think, at the end of the day is, is all about. You know, fearlessness is not because it doesn't mean that we're not scared. It means that we're still scared. We're terrified, but we, we're not too scared to try. We, we keep on going. We keep on trying. And we're not scared of failure because we shouldn't be, we shouldn't be afraid to, to fail because mm. that is how we will, at the end of the day, mm. succeed. And I think one of the most important things with that, which is something I suffer from as well, um, sometimes you're scared to start. Yes. Yeah. Mm. You have an idea. You've had it for exactly. a million years. You want to start that gym. You want to, you know, start studying something new. You want mm. to start working with skin. You want to have a bag line. You want mm. to be a taxi driver, whatever the, the point is. But you're scared to start. Absolutely. Let's talk starting. How do you just start? How did you start? You know, you just need to take that leap of faith. Yes. You know, <laughs> if, if, you know, the, 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 the leap of faith and because not, it's, it's, it's like, you know, with our Sarami, I like, just love everything she said about, the, said this morning is because when you put out something to, your, to the universe, you're already believing it and you're already seeing it happening. You might not physically see it, but you're already happening. But by, by, channeling your energy that it's going to happen and putting, it, like our first event, when we did our first event, it was the most terrifying thing in the world, you know, but then when we went through all that we went through, it was learnings, but learnings can only make you get better for, for the next event or the next time you go pitch or the next time you go pitch the business to a corporate or to, to wellness or to, to HR, but the, it's, it's that leap of faith. And if you don't take, if you don't if you, if you don't fall, you'll never fall. Like, if you don't take that step, you'll never know. Mm. So it's just getting out of your comfort zone and putting it out there. Put, sometimes you just need to block your no, the noise. I don't know if anybody did this this year, but I left a lot of WhatsApp groups because there was noise. Mm. There was noise, there was noise, there was noise. And um, juggling three kids, it meant that I had three school groups, which each had probably three groups because schools tried to do extra. every day. Em, you know, but it's that. It's like noise. There's a time when you need to block the noise and say, what value do they add? Mm. And you, like, you leave at midnight when they don't see. <laughs> you know, you leave, you leave, you leave, you leave, you leave, you leave. And then, then in the morning, you're like, ah, that wasn't so bad. Mm. You know, not that you, you're angry at people, but you just walk away from that, mm. that group because you need, you just need inner peace. You need... To, mm. to, to deal with the people that matter most, that are around you, that are with you, and then you'll see the, list, the, the, the rest later. But being, like starting the business is mm. the same as walking away from anything that's unhealthy or any, it can be a relationship, it can be a friendship that's toxic, but you just need to take that step. Mm. And then you'll realize that, oh my gosh, I'm still fine. I'll be okay. So it's still with the business, it's just taking that leap of faith, putting it out there. You know, start with your circle, people that believe, with, believe mm. in you that guys, I have got this event, I've got this thing, buy a ticket. The most empowering thing is to support a friend. Not like this, but actually mm. buying the ticket, buying the product, you know, buying the entering the pageant, mm. you know, it's, it's that leap of faith. But if you never, you'll never know unless you try. Mm. All right, so I'm gonna open the floor. Um, also remember that uh, throats are open, Toy Moy has plenty and uh, make sure you please take a picture uh, tag at so wet and live also on uh, on twitter is toy moy sa instagram is a toy underscore moy underscore sa so please tag and drink and have fun uh do we have any questions on the floor is there anyone who would like to to comment or to ask um and yeah it's open just put your hand up and we will come through with the microphone because i also want to ask first um if i want to study what you you are doing right now, and I, you know, the new way of living in 2020. Can I do this online? Can I, you know, study without actually going in because 2020 is the way it is? So, great question. Um, there are lots of different colleges and universities, and they do offer on demand learning. So, you can, um, of course, you know, watch seminars and um, do everything online these days. But, of course, there is a practical component to what we do as well. So, there will be days that you do need to go in, um, you know, and do practical sessions as well. Um, but, yeah, absolutely, it is a possibility. How long does it take? So, um, 
my industry is very dynamic. We've got, um, you know, you can go full out and get a diploma, which is usually about two or three years, depending on where you study. And then I actually studied an extra year to get my degree, um, and that was at UJ, so I did four years. There are also lots of modular courses that you could do. So if you want to learn just how to wax or just how to do nails, you can, of course, um, apply for those as well. Alrighty. And then uh, how do I enter Mrs. South Africa? I mean, not... <laughs> <laughs> so um, you can enter online. Our entries are actually open for 2021 already, even though we're still busy with the 2020 campaign that's just been extended a bit. Um, but yeah, that is how you can enter, and it is an incredible journey, an incredible program. We, um, you know, it's an, a women empowerment program. We really see how the women grow and the, you know, everything that they go through throughout their journey. So yes, go check it out on our social media pages, Mrs. South Africa, as well as on our website. What are the criteria besides being a Mrs.? So nothing really. I mean, it, it, that is that is it. Um, so it is a pageant for married women, just because the Miss South Africa is more for the younger ladies and for unmarried ladies. The kind of Miss South Africa had, if you know, started specifically to to give that opportunity for married ladies and to, I think, also show married women that life doesn't end with mm. with. I marriage. mean, here's our gorgeous Mrs. You know? South Africa right now. I mean, give her a round of applause. Look at her; she's amazing. <laughs> Exactly, yeah. And I mean, she's a great example. Mm. Um, life it definitely certainly doesn't end with marriage or with motherhood. You can still accomplish so much no matter your age. And, um, and that's really what we stand for. And like I said, the journey is really all about women empowerment and sisterhood and entrepreneurship. Um, our ladies also have to, you know, do a lot of fundraising and charity work and that kind of thing, which is, it forms part of the whole empowerment process, I would say. So, so that, is, that is it in a nutshell. And um, yes, that is take that leap of faith and, and do it. It really is, um, you know, a lot of the ladies actually refer to it as the MBA of life because you just almost rediscover yourself once again. You know, we find that a lot of women through marriage, through motherhood, through, uh, you know, business, through, you know, we as women give so much of ourselves to other people that we sometimes throughout that process uh, lose ourselves. And I think mm -hmm. with Mrs. South Africa, it's almost a year that you take back for yourself and you invest in yourself and you... Um, are a little bit selfish, which is not wrong, you know, mm -hmm. and you really just, um, what, 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 they've, what it's been referred to as almost the MBA of life, because you just rediscover yourself and you learn so many skill sets and, and things throughout the year that it's, um, it really is an incredible journey. Kitu, how do we support you? If we want to be part of it, to making sure that when I leave here, I'm going to look after my body, I'm going to be fit. So I'm going to be healthy. <laughs> I'm not saying we're going to do it, but we're going to try. You can follow our movement on, on, on Instagram, Pop Up Gym. And to, so next week we do have, we have our year-end event. All the information is on, is, on, is on our Facebook and our Facebook pages. And this year, so usually we have, when we end the year, we end the year with 300 women, stage, huge lineup. But because of how 2020 has been, yeah. the theme for this year is we want to feed your mind, we want to feed your body, we want to feed your soul with a, with a wellness morning. So it's, it won't be just exercise, it'll be food, it'll be, it'll be exercise, it'll be but connecting. So it's a smaller, intimate group, but it will always have the, the spark of and the touch of 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 the energy that Letoho and myself bring that grew the brand to to what it is now. What do you ladies do to to relax and to unwind, especially 2020 vibes? What do you do? I love you myself in my mother, room you and I drink wine. <laughs> <laughs> been that self-care and it's been a major thing on Instagram especially yeah. during lockdown you know just taking out a few moments to you know go have a nice bath yeah. have a nice glass of wine yeah. put your mask on because yeah. in daily times we don't necessarily always have time to do a little bit of a mask so mm. just that extra self-care is very important mm. I'm a runner. I feel that Oof. running de-stresses me. <laughs> so I like to run and um, also Netflix and chill. <laughs> <laughs> very, very important to catch up with your series. Yeah. Uh, do you have any questions on the floor? Comments? Uh, we, we're going to wrap it up in just a bit. Does anyone want to say anything? Ladies, are you shy? <laughs> Comments? Oh, no. <laughs> All right, what do we have? Okay, I just want to ask you something. Yes, ma'am. Ketue, 
As now, I'm just a stay-at-home mom doing nothing. And you can see every day I'm getting bigger by day. <laughs> just a little tip, just an advice. What can I do just to keep the 30 minutes? Only if you can just tell me something, because I now do nothing. Yes. Yeah. My, the, the best advice I can give you is leading it, going into the festive season. Yeah. If you can look at your calendar and, and do you like walking, it's discovering what you like. I found that over the years is that we can't, we aren't all, we can't brush everybody with the same paintbrush because we like different things. Yeah. It's, it's, if you can find that one thing that you used to enjoy and, 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 and like, is it walking? Is it, is, it, is it aerobics? Is it a skipping rope? You don't have to start big. If you find that one thing that you enjoy to get, get you moving, and do you like cooking, Ma? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's what you're doing. That's the only thing that, <laughs> that you're doing. <laughs> Just rounding the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> because because this, this, this thing, is a, it is a holistic thing, Ma. It's the moving, it's the eating, it's, it's watching what goes on the plate. Yeah. And because first of, give, I'll, I'll give you a little example to say, if you give yourself a goal to say that I'm going to run, but you need to be able to measure it, or I'm going to run or walk a kilometer, building it up, tomorrow I'm going to walk a kilometer. The following day, you build, you build, it's a build up to something, and at the end of the month, mm -hmm. you'll be able, you would have said, wow, I've walked on day one, I could only manage okay, this. On day, yes, yes, a build up, mm. because it can be very overwhelming, intimidating when you don't know where to start. And building up, it, building it up one day at a time. You mean walking just around the block? But not, <laughs> not walking when you can't have a conversation like this, that, 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 oh. that walking with intention. Where no, you're eating nothing, just walking, then come back. <laughs> I mean, no, a township, you can't just pass somebody. You just have to say hi. No, but <laughs> Max, <Matt, okay. laughs> I know you said you stayed home, but safety is key. Do you yeah. have oh, um, oh, um, that yeah, you can, yeah. if yeah. you can start e. Okay. Five. Yeah, five. On my own, really, no, think, yes. Anyway. <laughs> first, the first meeting, <laughs> call, call, call okay. the Abu Mama Bani, guys. We have a mission for December, which at the end of December, we yeah. need to have managed to walk a so, so, so distance. Okay. You write down our goals, which is step one, I stole a take comfortable clothes. I'm a take comfortable clothes, but you need each other because once you have that circle, see, so vogil. If there's none of that, okay. I'm I'm today okay. young poor me. But we find That's that it's true. just a cloud yeah. and there's no rain. But you look outside and you just only see the cloud and you say, I'm not going to go. If you start a circle of your trusted friends that, that will move you with you, because there's company, it's great to do this when you've got company. You hold each other accountable. You check with each other. And Google is the most amazing thing, Ma, because mm. you, you empower each other with information. You, yeah. do you know that I learned this? Do you know that I learned this? And food as well. Be, be creative. Today I cooked spinach, yeah. chicken, drumstick, rice and You know, I eat everything. With, with three kids in the house, you absolutely, you can't be picky. But my thing is portion control. Okay. Portion control. Going into festive, it's going to be even merrier. Yeah. So portion control, moving daily, having accountability partners that will hold you accountable, Guti, have you moved today? What's the plan tomorrow? If you have a, if you have a, a holiday plan, a December plan on how you're going to move, the battle is half won. Oh, well, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going gonna, to I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stalk you. <laughs> Not necessarily, so, um, well, we, we do, but not many. Okay. Yeah, we do, yeah. I guess here you say that soap, it's hard for our skin. Yes. But if I can tell you, ever since you've been using soap, <laughs> I don't know, I, I, that's why I'm here. I just want you to tell you, because I also want to, to have a nice skin. So that regime that you're talking about, sometimes I just buy serum, all these things. I don't even know how to use them. Mm. So, 
Well, it's very important that you go for a professional skin analysis. We at Dermalogica offer face mapping skin analysis. So we will analyze your skin in six different areas. And based on what we see, so we'll get to know your skin really well, get to know your skin concerns. And based on that, we will then provide a personalized product routine for you that will fit into your lifestyle because everybody's different. Um, and of course, we will guide you with professional treatments as well. So to reach your skin goals. So where do I find those people? So today we will be offering face mapping um, just outside the door as well. And for everybody, we have also provided you with gifts. So you can come and have a chat with us and receive your gift as well. Should we hold your account? Should we all find you on Facebook and remind you every day? I'm sure Ma has a Facebook page. Right? <laughs> Do we have another question? I hear go on the side. Is there another question? Yes. Um, Hello. Mine is uh, basically uh, on the skin uh, mm -hmm. problem. I've got. I'm. I'm a, I've, I have uh, 51. I've turned 51. Yes. yes. No. Wow. But. <laughs> My skin is going back to a teenager's skin. I have these pimples which I don't understand. I bought whatever, you know, on the shelf. And it's really, really frustrating. So I think I'm answered when you say it might be the soul. So what, what needs to be done, really? Because it's really frustrating. Well, something that us as women, we go through quite a lot is stress. Um, you know, because we not only have the stress of having a job, but we also go through stress of looking after our family at home. So we actually find that women struggle with adult acne two times more than men. Um, so it is important that, you know, not only are we looking at your skin routine, but also managing stress at home. So exercise, diet, um, taking some time out for yourself. But absolutely, we do have a range of product called Active Clearing. And that specifically um, targets breakouts and acne as well as aging because we know that you know we're all getting to the age now where we want to start um, with those anti-wrinkle creams firming the skin and evening out the tone as well so definitely come chat to us and we'll have a look at your skin how often should i use sunscreen Sunscreen is something we need to use every single day. And oh. if you are in direct sunlight, um, it is important that you reapply your sunscreen. Because often when we're outdoors, maybe we're doing um, running, we're swimming, we're sweating and wiping off that sunscreen. Mm. Um, so reapply that SPF is very, very important. And indoors as well. UV is everywhere, penetrates through glass. Um, we're also now a lot more in front of our laptops, our phones, and our laptops actually give off blue light. Blue light is actually a free radical, so it causes a lot of damage to the skin. So we actually need to be protecting our skin indoors as well. Sure. I feel like we're learning Every so, day. so, so much. <laughs> uh, we've got another question at the back. Our Miss Erita. <laughs> I so it's easy to start, right? This whole weight loss, weight fitness, uh, staying on course, being consistent is a whole different story. So starting, I'm like, please, I'll start tomorrow. Mm. Yeah. But how do you stay on course and kind of understanding perhaps why you're doing what you need to be doing? Um, so Sure. <laughs> it is easy to start. Ne? <laughs> you know, how I approach or what, what my take was when I started this journey, I told myself that it's not for, I'm not losing weight for a wedding, uh, this and uh, this, it's this, it's a life. If you approach it that this is a lifelong journey, I want to live a healthy and active lifestyle forever. I, I know that I, the thing I enjoy most is when I'm saying I'm 40 and they, I think, what? Like, yes, I'm 40. You know, I, I love, I want to embrace every age, every, every decade I get to, but enjoy it to the fullest. So if my thing is that it's, it's a really, it is a big mental thing that if, and there's so many emails that we, we get is like, yeah, Papa Jim, I'm getting married in three months time. What is the quick, fast way for, <laughs> for me to lose weight? So like, congratulations, you know, go get married, we'll talk afterwards. Because it's really, 
it's, 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 it will be creating false expectation to say, do this, do this, do this, because it's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. That's why if you approach this as a life, I, I think this is, this is year, I'm going on to year 10, living like this. Mm -hmm. And I, I couldn't be, be ha happy, like feeling healthier and happier and lighter because I think I took it as this is, this, is a, this is a mental, emotional, physical thing. If you approach it that way and you say it's a lifelong journey, you're less likely to, to, to fall off the wagon, to get off course. If you don't, if your goal is not to, it's that wedding I'm going to, it's my sister's getting married, or I'm, I'm a bride, or I'm going on holiday, or I'm going to Bali, or I'm going to Dubai. If you don't treat it as a project for a certain thing, if you treat it as, if you say, I want, this is how I want to live my life, and the weight loss will be part, I want to be healthy, but the weight loss will be part of the journey. Weight loss is, shouldn't be the, it should be, the, the healthy living, the exercising is the journey and the weight loss and this, all these things that you see happening is going to be a by the by. But if you're feeling like I can, I, I'm, I'm feeling light, I'm feeling ha happy, it's, it's a journey. I don't know if I've Should we also different. follow you on Facebook as well and remind you every day? <laughs> <laughs> I followed her today. I'm going to say, yes, I'm going to say. I've got a friend of mine who's actually at the back. I started jogging during lockdown. Yes. Jogging, I won. But now we're holding each other accountable, okay. Was okay. I'm going to no, continue no, I'm now. Partnership. <laughs> yes, judge Jan, we don't judge each other. Thank you so much, ladies. Um, the conversation will continue. There are drinks, there is food. Um, we're going to be networking, uh, you know, switching numbers and switching ideas. So uh, let's have that conversation. And also we've got a gallo artist who's about to entertain us. Uh, Liolo is, the, is in the building. Liolo is ready. So we're going to get off the stage. And remember to uh, sweat in live as well. Use the hashtag know your place. Let's have a good time. Uh, fill up your drinks and your food. Luyolo is coming through on this stage. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.